So if you look on the first slide that I'm showing, um, that's the main Triscopia browser page, triscopia.com. Um, from here, you can always ping this browser and join a meeting um, by throwing in your name for the participant list and um, your and a meeting ID, whether that's your meeting ID or a room that you're joining. From here, you can also check your audio and your video settings. I'll go ahead and annotate where that is. Um, this is a good idea if you're joining meetings and you're, you're not using the right device, um, you're not hearing anyone, no one's hearing you, or your camera's not working. Always a good place to go and check and make sure that you have the right device selected. You can also check your settings from here, or change your settings from here as well. Um, top right-hand corner. And when you click on settings, it's going to ask you to sign in. Um, this is going to be the login and password that you received in your Triscopia email for your trial for your trial period. Typically, we do um, your first name and your last your, um, your first initial and then your last name. Um, and then the password is a general password, unless you went ahead and changed that on your own. And once you sign in, um, it brings up your virtual room settings. So you can change the, the name of your virtual room. Um, for default, it's probably your company name and your name. You can also add a moderator pin. What the moderator pin is going to do, um, that's going to give you moderation controls in your virtual room. So you can mute. Um, audio, mute participants' audio, mute their video, um, just to kind of keep the distraction levels down. And you also can lock down access to the moderator tab. I'll go through that in a little bit, but that's where a lot of your command and control is for Scopia Desktop. So the moderator pin is definitely a good thing to consider. Also protect your meeting with a pin. So um, let's say that you want an extra layer of security for people joining your meeting. Whenever they put in your meeting ID, they're also going to have to put in a PIN. So again, just ensuring that only people that you have given the PIN to and have access to the PIN are joining your room. And then the other one I want to point out too, um, you can place participants in a waiting room. So if you don't want people in your room talking before you join as the moderator, you can place them in a waiting room and they get just the standard, you are in the waiting room, you're waiting for the moderator. And then when you join, the meeting will start. This is what your audio, um, your audio settings looks like. So as you see, there's a drop-down menu for the playback, and uh, for the record or for your audio playback, and also for your audio mic. You can see the record and the playback. So important to know that that's here. And again, the audio test is right down here. And of course, you also have it for the video as well. And it says to select your USB video device if you have an external camera, um, or you're going to want to select what is integrated in, in with your laptop. And the preview, and I'll go ahead and highlight that, is where you go to check uh, how your camera looks, how your lighting looks before you join a video call. And this is the, what the main Scopia desktop um, layout looks like. So by default, your participant list and your chat box are on the left. Um, your video, your continuous video feed, so where you see all the participants, is going to be in the right, that larger area. And then you see three main toolbars on the top, view, present, and moderate. And I will address each of those separately. Selected by default is the automatic, and that's the layout that we see right now. Um, if you select some of the other ones, um, you're going to get a mixed view or a stacked view. What that means is whenever there's content being shared, uh, you're going to have a different view for um, how your content looks and how your video looks. So for a stacked view, your content and your video are going to be about the same size, but they're going to be stacked on top of each other. Um, for the side-by-side -side view, again, content and video are going to be the same size. They're going to be side-by-side. Um, so in this default layout that we have right now, um, automatic, the content becomes your largest um, box in the right, and then the video gets uh, pushed above the participant list and the chat box, so it's a small box on the left. Some people don't like that. They still want to have a, 
you know, a keen eye on the video. So they do, you know, they make the video and the content the same size, and do more of a side-by-side -side or a stacked view. So under the Moderate tab, the Invite button, which I have put a dot next to in red. We have created a terminal directory within Triscopio with a lot of um, different demo endpoints that we have actually set up in the Raleigh Durham office. Um, while you're trialing Triscopia, you have access to these terminals um, and can call them in, you know, just to play around with the invite feature and dial in um, some of the XT1200s we have and the XT5000s, um, as well as the desktop units as well. If you want to do more of a training environment, um, this is where you set a lecturer. By setting a lecturer, one person becomes the main um, video feed. Everyone else's video is blocked. And then everyone else is muted as well. And they are going to have a highlighted raise hand button. And they can click that raise hand button to request to speak. Um, the lecturer gets a little hand next to the participant, and they grant them the request to speak. Really good in a classroom training environment. You can also, if you have a endpoint dialed in um, from the directory that I mentioned earlier, you can also control the camera. Um, and that's via remote camera control. So if you click on control camera, it will bring over here your options for the cameras that can be controlled. And like I said, those are going to be pan tilt zoom cameras, so it's going to be an endpoint. And you can remotely control that from desktop. You can also mute participants' audio from here, grant their requests, grant their requests to speak. Um, which is, you know, via the raise hand button, and then block their video. Of course, as the moderator, you also have the ability to disconnect. Um, you can disconnect an unwanted participant. Um, you can terminate the meeting to disconnect everybody. So you always have that in your hands, under your control. And then you have streaming. So you can have up to 600 participants watching a streamed meeting. Um, and this is a live broadcast. So whatever's happening in your meeting room at that time, you enable streaming. It's going to be streamed out to those participants that join via the webcast. And then the recordings. Of course, the recording is something that you've recorded and you are giving it to a participant. Um, you know, anyone that needs to see the meeting or the content after the fact. So these are recorded as QuickTime files, so .mov files, and you can access them from the main browser page that I showed you in the beginning. Um, and it's one of, it's the farthest tab to the right, and it says Watch Recording. And those are where all the recordings are stored. And then locking down the meeting. Um, if you want a hard start to your meeting, you don't want anyone else to join past a certain time, or let's say you're um, talking about con you know, confidential information in the meeting and you want to make sure that no one just accidentally jumps in your room, you can lock down the meeting and past that point, no one will be able to join the room. And this is the invite command that I mentioned. Again, if you click this, click this drop down arrow, you will see invite a terminal by the directory. And that's what you want to do to invite our demo units. You can also grab your network statistics um, to find out what you're sending and receiving. And that can also be done down here via those little monitors. Um, if you just drag your mouse over those little monitors, you can bring up the stats. Or for a detailed report, you click on that network stats up here in the right-hand um, corner. You can also generate a link to the meeting. If you really quickly need to ask someone to join, shoot them the link in a text or an IM. You have a few different layout options. Um, and this layout option is different than the view button. Um, this layout option just focuses on how your Brady Bunch um, video feeds look. So you can rearrange um, you know, whether you have all the video feeds the same size or whether one's larger and the rest are smaller. And I also want to point out that this is where you block your camera. So if you're having one of those days and you don't want to be on video, you can always block your camera. And I'll address as well your own audio mute. So always want to be aware um, of that might be causing and make sure that if you're not speaking that you mute yourself. 
and let's say you don't mute yourself, the moderator is likely to come over here and click on the mic next to your name. Um, and then it will send a little notification you've been muted by the moderator. Again, that's the quick um, access to your network stats. So presentation, another really important feature of this tool. It's this middle button right here. When you click it, um, and this is on Windows because on Mac, on a Mac computer, you only have the ability to share your entire desktop. But on Windows, it's going to bring up an option to share your entire desktop or a specific application. And when you click share specific application, it's going to uncheck all of these boxes, and then you can select which ones you want to share. To end the presentation, it's a little presentation box with the X. And then notice, too, that you still have um, an arrow box or an arrow button that will bring up all of your moderator functions still. So you still have access to this entire list. Um, I really like this because, uh, you know, if I, I do need to mute someone, um, block their camera, I can always do that from the moderate tab. Um, I can also start a recording if I think that's relevant and terminate the meeting. And then lastly, um, I do want to point out the slider, the slider function. Um, so when you are in live presentation, um, and this right, the view that we have right here of this toolbar is a thumbnail view. I do want to point that out for this entire presentation. Um, we've seen the toolbars in thumbnail view. Um, so if you, if you want to use this view, um, you know, go for it. It hides the toolbars until um, you move, you know, you, until you move your mouse around to find them. Um, if you're not in a thumbnail view, then all the toolbars are going to be gray toolbars, and they're, you know, going to be across the top here. I apologize for the squiggly lines. Um, so, and the slider button is going to be over here uh, in the left-hand corner of that gray toolbar. It's going to be the same button. Um, it's going to be next to the magnifying glass, and it's a black box with lines going out from the side of it. And once you activate that, it brings up content that's been previously shared. Um, this feature is really useful because you, if you don't want to interrupt the presenter to go back to, you know, to go back and reference something that he or she already shared, you can do that on your own. You don't need to go back and ask. And that's just a quick overview. Um, Again, wanted to just highlight some of the features and functions that you might not have known are there um, and point them out so you know exactly where to go to start playing around with them. The easiest way to get a custom this tool, just to use it. Again, you can, it's a free client, a free desktop client, so you can invite anyone from within your organization or outside of your organization to get with you. And don't forget about downloading the Outlook plugin. And I will show where, where you should get, where you can get the Outlook plugin. Um, you just go back to the main browser page, and if you don't have it installed, it will come up as extra components that you can still install from Scopia Desktop. Um, and that Outlook plugin is just a scheduling tool, so when you have it in your Outlook, you'll see Scopia Meeting, and when you click on Scopia Meeting, it will populate a calendar invite with all of your room credentials. So it makes it really easy for you to schedule a conference via Outlook, um, and then your invitees have your calendar invite and your login credentials as well. It's a great tool. I use it all the time. Um, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to contact me at Weber, W-E-B-E-R, 32, at avaya.com. Thank you. Bye.